Deontay Wilder says he felt a little sluggish in his third fight with Tyson Fury. And I agree. We know what we saw. BS aside, but let's talk. Push the weight in your flex. Flex the lavish one in the six. Yeah. Fit the runner boy, you nigga, no question. Yo. You ain't wanna motherfucker high stepping. Hey, hey, you never had a big enough weapon. Hey, hey. motherfucker never learned your lesson. Right. Hey. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Woof. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Oh, 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 I mean, they walk up, drink blood, things out. Full moon, motherfucker, change like a hoe, nigga. I'm just a nigga from the hood trying to stack a little cheddar for the money. Drew Titan, Bronx on deck. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. So now, let's talk about it. The picture you see right here is our brother, the champ, Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder. This was right before the uh, Tyson Fury fight. Um, believe it or not, as great as he looks, physique wise, that is not his natural frame. That is not his natural frame. Um, I knew that going in. A lot of us, we all knew that going in. But it was an experiment that he tried, and it didn't do him too well visibly. And we saw that later in the fight. We saw that later in the fight. Um, let me read a little bit from this article from a boxing scene. Link will be in the description. I'm just going to go to the, uh, to the important parts. Um, it says the added pounds didn't benefit Wilder as he had hoped in the third period fight. He says, I felt a little sluggish, a little heavy, Wilder said. I mean, you got to understand, I never had been 240 in my entire life. He's never been that heavy before. But it was an experiment that I wanted to try. And we did what we had to do to get the weight put on there. Now, let me stop right there. I was in Vegas. Uh, we went upstairs and watched him work out. Okay. That was my first time, like, like seeing him face to face. And I said, man, he's a little bigger than <laughs> he's a little, I knew he was tall, but I was like, he's a little wider than I had thought. And um, I'm going to tell you what I saw. His meal prep was sitting right there on a the table. And I said, geez, he got to eat all this. And I'm like, wow. He had a nutritionist there. I believe it was a woman. She was, a, I forget her name, but um, they did the job because when you can have added weight and you can still see a six pack, you would think that that's good weight, but it, okay, like in bodybuilding, that's great weight. Okay. Um, but in boxing, you need, I mean, weight really doesn't matter as long as you don't, if you don't have cardiovascular, you're pretty much dead and stinking. Let me just go ahead and read on and I'll just I'll elaborate more on that. He says, but it was an experiment, one that he wanted to try. He said, and you know, that's an experience up in the history books for me. So, you know, the only way to become wise is to apply knowledge of life, knowledge to life, excuse me. And we've gained a lot of knowledge from that. And now we know what to do leading forward. And Helen is six foot six, normally between 235 and 250. Uh, those are his, those are his weights over the past five years. Uh, Wilder, you know, he, uh, he's a natural 220. Okay, uh, Wilder's 36. Helen, this is 38. This should be pretty even. You know what I mean? Um, this is still a dangerous fight for Deontay. There's a lot of things that we're wondering about. We're wondering about his punch resistance. Is it still there? Um, the power is still going to be there. And Helen, has improved. I'm not going to write him off. This is a this is a challenge, man. This is not a cakewalk. This is not a cakewalk. Remember, the boxing world put Adam Kornacki on a pedestal. You put him on a pedestal, and Hellenus stopped that train directly in his tracks. Okay? So this is not a cakewalk for uh, uh, Deontay Wilder. This is, this is a serious match right here. And we're going to be there for it. We're going to be there to support. Okay? Now, back to my opinion. Um... Not all weight gain is good weight. As you can see in this picture, you can still see he has a six pack there. But the the, the uh, his physique has nothing to do with the sport of boxing. Ask Andy Ruiz, man. You look at him and you're like, man, what the hell? And he punches so damn fast. And he can go 12 rounds, man. He can go 12 rounds, okay? 
Now, Deontay, in the first Fury fight, now mind you, y'all, y'all already know what I know. I'm not going to tell you how I feel. Forget what I feel. Y'all know what I know about Tyson Fury and his cheating ass. Y'all already know that. I don't want to discuss that right now. We're discussing what he went through, per what Deontay went through personally as far as uh, a new strategy going into the third fight. And he's admitting that it did him more harm than good. And it showed. As the fight progressed, he looked fatigued. He really did. He really looked fatigued. All right? But go back to the first Fury fight. He was fine. 12 rounds. And uh, salute to Malik Scott. When he was on my show, he said, you know, look, Deontay, I think he was he, he was sick or something leading up to that fight. Weighed in like under two, 215 or something. He said, you know, you lose weight because you're doing all that cardio and you're sweating. He said he had to been about 190 during the fight or something like that. I have to go back and listen to it. But, it, but as the fight progressed, he might have been under 200 pounds. And he, and he was swinging for the fences from round 1 to 12. Okay? In the third fight, he was tired. And that was visible. And Deontay, he's talking about it now. He coughs that up. For, uh, he chalks that up to uh, him uh, 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 trying this new thing with uh, being able to out-muscle Fury. The thing is... Fury has been that size the majority of his life. When he doesn't train, he balloons. If Deontay doesn't train, he shrinks. Two totally different body parts. I mean, like, like, like body types, I mean. Okay, and again, I'm not going to talk about the cheating right now. I'm not doing it. What I'm saying is Fury is used to lugging all of that weight around. And it was in his game plan to tie him up and lean on him. What Deontay needed was, was footwork. You know, he needed to judo his ass. Let him lean on him. Every time he leaned on him, hey, go to, the, go to a knee. Throw your hands up. Look at the ref. Play it up. There was, a, there, was, there was a lot of things that he could have did, but as the fight progressed, he was getting tired. And when you get tired and you're trying to uh, protect your chin and protect your body, there's a lot of thinking in there. And the thinking can be exhausting. So I know what he was going through. I know exactly what he was going through. It's hard to think. Again, y'all, I'm not talking about the cheating at this point. We know that that happened. We're talking about what he said strategic the strategy was 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 off for him and he said he learned remember i talk about failing but you got to fail forward the man was tired it was too much muscle for him he was up at 240 and he looked every bit of it but 220 is his natural weight they they, they showing up they showing pictures on the internet of him before the fury fight and him now they're saying they look like a cruiserweight fine fine but he's still dangerous Go watch the first Fury fight and watch the third one. Two different sets of cardio. Two different sets of cardio. So he has some time uh, uh, to change some things up. You got to get past Hel Helenus first. And we're going to be there strong. Rooting for the king. It's bomb squad all day here. Get past Helenus. Do what you need to do on your end. Hopefully, you can corner Fury into a fourth fight. Fail forward. That means you learn. You know what I'm saying? The brother knows. And he says it in this article. Link will be in the description. He says it. You know? It's called accountability. But just because he admits this doesn't mean that that other crap didn't take place and y'all know what i'm talking about it's hard to talk about this trilogy without talking about everything else that happened behind the scenes but, st but strategy wise he kind of messed up as far as uh, uh, uh gaining weight i never thought that was a good idea but that, that's not for me to say i'm not in there i'm not i'm not a pro in the ring that, that's something i kept to myself but now that he said it, I can say it too. I agree. That was a bad, that was a bad choice. 
We just seen it recently. Why the hell was Joseph Parker coming in that heavy as a, at a career high against Joe Joyce? That was not how you beat that guy. Parker should have came in at his lightest and, 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 and he should have been using the ring and out boxing him. Why did he get that heavy? Because what happened was he crippled what he does best, boxing. Joe Joyce is slow and robotic, but, but he has great timing. And he cuts the ring off magnificently. But if Joseph Parker was light enough on his feet, he could have been able to box and get out of there. And had the stamina to do so later in the fight. But he tried to outmuscle Joe Joyce, man. What are you doing, man? That look of panic on his face when Joyce was catching him. You never seen Joseph Parker look like that. But he was tired. Not a good look. Not a good look. Now, I know it worked for some people, you know, Spinks versus Holmes. Uh, Bernard Hopkins versus Antonio Tarver at light heavyweight. But come on, as a matter of fact, Spinks, uh, 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 Bernard Hopkins went out and grabbed the same dietitian that uh, uh, Spinks had. I think his last name was Mackey, if I remember correctly. And got him ready for the Tarver fight. So sometimes it works, but this is the other side. So you learn, you live and learn, you understand? And salute to the champ. And uh, I have faith he'll get it right. Um, and unlike a lot of people, I wanna see a Fort Fury fight because the circumstances will be way different. <laughs> and one of them is being, the fight definitely won't be happening in Vegas. <laughs> Wait a minute. Can Fury fly here yet? Move!